Today we're here to uh, celebrate the birthday of a, a hundredth birthday of a lifelong Cannon Falls resident, George Rapp. Uh, so we've got his wife, Claris, is here, and uh, Brian Lindell is a old friend of uh, George's, and I'm Ken Rapp, uh, nephew of George. So uh, George was born on uh, May 11th, right, um, 1918. Yep. And uh, I did a little digging. I went down to the Beacon office and they uh, dug out a, a copy of the May 10th, 1918 Beacon. So I, I got a chance to read that. And I, <laughs> just to set the stage a little bit, I thought I'd give a few of the headlines from, uh, from 1918, including some from the Beacon. But, uh, in our president was Woodrow Wilson back then, uh -huh. and we were at the end of World War I, although, uh, although it ended in May of uh, that year. Uh, probably the biggest thing that happened in the United States in 1918 was the outbreak of the influenza flu. It was the most devastating epidemic in world history. 28% of Americans were affected by the flu. 675,000 Americans died. That was 10 times as many people as died in World War I. Uh, 43,000 servicemen died in uh, World War I of the flu. More than half of the American deaths were from the flu, not from bullets. Um, the average lifespan in the United States dropped by 10 years in the period of 19, uh, 18 to 1919. Even Woodrow Wilson was suffering from the flu when he negotiated the Treaty of Versailles, which happened in uh, 1919. So. The average income in 1918 was $1,520 a year. Adjusted for inflation, today that's about $26,700. <clears throat> so about half of what the uh, average income today is in the United States. Average cost of a new car is 400 bucks. Mm -hmm. Today that adjusted would be uh, $8,000 adjusted for inflation. Average house costs $5,000 and that would be about $88,000 uh, in today's numbers. Only 8% of the homes in America had a telephone. 6% of uh, people in the United States graduated from high school. And then a few headlines from the Beacon that year. Minnesota in May recruited uh, their goal to recruit 1,250 servicemen. Um, 20 Goodyear County boys this was one of the headlines. 20 Goodyear County boys left for the service on Saturday. Hundreds have gathered to bid them goodbye. The U.S. debt was $8 billion. Uh, half of that was loaned to the Allies uh, for the war purposes, which would be paid back. So adjusted for inflation, that's about $140 billion was our national debt. Far cry from the 20 plus billion dollars or trillion dollars that it is today. Uh, in the newspaper, several of the ads were uh, to try to get you to purchase the war savings stamps. Uh, and there were also several ads trying to encourage you to uh, save waste copper, waste brass, aluminum, lead, rubber, and those such things for recycling. And then, of course, some of the, much of the paper was uh, for local news, big news flash. Attorney Eskison made a trip to St. Paul on Saturday. And Mr. and Mrs. Carl Johnson spent Sunday evening at the S. Johnson home. <laughs> so this is big, big news. So I guess the, uh, in Cannon Falls, even though the war was going on, we didn't have our hair on fire uh, okay. because of the war. So, what would you can you tell us something about your early years growing up out in the farm there? There were twelve children in the family. Yeah. Running water. No. Oh no. Telephone. 
A crank. A crank. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Elec electricity? No, no, no. But 12 kids in that little house. Yep. What were your jobs around the farm? Well, when I got big enough, it was milk cows. Okay. We had a lot of milk cows. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Chickens? Yeah, I had chickens. Pigs? Yeah. Little of everything. Did you farm with horses or tractor? No, well, them days said horses. Horses. So. What, uh, how many years did you go to school? Eight. Eight years, all right. Well, and I learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you bet. <laughs> did you have a favorite subject? In school, or? No, no, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Recess? Recess, yeah. <laughs> and you walked up through the pasture to school every day? Oh, yeah. How about the winter? I walked up the same pasture. Through all that deep snow? Oh, yeah. I heard that, um, in maybe it was later years, that Brian's mother was a teacher mm -hmm. in the little school. Um, she but was, she didn't uh, teach you, I guess. Huh? She was never my teacher, though. Okay. No. So what were things like at, at home? You, all these all these kids, uh, uh, I know that there was um, an age difference of about 10 years older and 10 years younger than you. You were near the middle of the, of the pack. So uh, who'd you hang around with the most in those early days? You mean of the family? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> mostly my own, close to my own age. Okay. That'd be Ray and Arnold and hey, uh, Clara. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and Marvin and Doris oh. and Doris, okay. I see you. How about in the neighborhood? Uh, do you have any buddies in the neighborhood? Oh yeah. I had a couple of pretty real good buddies. Who are they? Uh, Marvin Bird was one. He was a real good friend of mine. And Stephen Fredrickson. He's a good friend of mine. So after eight years of school, then did you, you didn't start working out right away. Did you work at home for a while? Oh yeah, at home, yeah. And then started working out as a hired man? I worked for Rudolph Johnson, and Marvin Prink, and Ray Samuelson. And he had to treat you pretty good because he was a brother-in-law, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Just uh, for everybody's information, there were actually 13 um, kids, uh, one stillborn. Your first, uh, oh. your oldest sister was uh, stillborn, that was Olga. Mm -hmm. And then along came uh, Henry and Conrad, who married Mildred, right? Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong here, George. Uh -huh. uh, then Ray, or uh, Clara, who uh, married Ray Samuelson. Mm -hmm. um, then there was Ray Rapp, who married Dolores. Rosella married Virgil Holm. Arnold married Norma. And then you came along. I came along. Married Claris. Uh, Doris married El Eldridge Banks. Marvin, my dad, uh, married Lenora. Lucille uh, married Milton, Milton Callstrom. Leroy. Uh, married Marion, and Virgil married Doris. So that was a, a quite a brunt, quite a baker's dozen there. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Grandma and Grandpa? Grandma came over here from Sweden by herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how old was she about? Well, I'm not sure, but uh, I think she was in her teens. Yeah. You know. Grandpa, uh, Axel, what kind of a guy was he? Well, he was the kind of a guy who didn't want to cross. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, he was a good guy. He was a, he was a good father. <clears throat> he, was, he was strict. Who was the disciplinarian in the family when you were a little kid? Axel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever need any disciplining or? Oh, not me, but the rest oh, of them. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. What the heck did people do in the early 1900s for fun when you're a teenager? Well, a lot of things I don't tell anybody. Oh. <laughs> you did a little trapping, didn't you? Yeah, I used to trap. 
Skunk. Skunk? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I trapped a few skunks. Smelled pretty bad, but... <laughs> so what do you do with the skunk once you catch it? S skin them and sell the hide. No kidding. What, uh, who'd you hang around with in those days? Uh, who were your friends? And well, I had a neighbor there, Mar Marvin Burr. He was a good friend of mine. Stephen Fredericks, and they were close neighbors. They were, mm -hmm. were good friends. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of bad things together. <laughs> Anything you can tell? No. No? <laughs> okay. Now, for the war, were you drafted or did you enlist? Oh, I was drafted. You were drafted. <clears throat> and yeah. where did you end up? I ended up in Seattle, Washington first. I had my basic training there, and then I went to Juneau, Alaska. But then from there, I went to Excursion Inlet, Alaska. What what were your jobs when you were well, in? Well, I was a fireman for a while. Worked for the fire department. Were you in the kitchen? Yeah, I got to be a military policeman. Were you in the kitchen for a while, I heard? Oh, yeah, that's right. I worked in the kitchen a while, yeah. And, uh, night shift. How long were you in the service? Three years and nine months. Now, you had a... Um, a little bit of a, uh, how should we say, you, you had a problem with your eye that, that, that didn't keep you in out of the service, apparently. No, but I uh, <coughs> kept me from going overseas. Okay. I couldn't go overseas. Okay. How did that happen here? Can you tell us how you, how you lost your eye? Well, kid was behind me, and he threw a black birdie eraser, and just as I turned around, I got it, I got it in the eye. And uh, so today, you, do you still have the same uh, glass eye that you had back then? Well, I didn't get the glass eye for many years afterwards. Okay. I got that up at the vet's hospital. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When did you meet Claris? When was the first time you met Claris? Can you answer that? <laughs> <laughs> you remember? It was after you got out of the service? Yeah. Oh, uh, see, when did I meet you? Well, we, it was... When was it? We got married in 1950, so... 50? Oh, yeah. Before that, that was about four years before that. Was oh. it love at first sight, you would you say? Or? Love at first sight. Good, <laughs> good. <laughs> good, good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was your first car? Oh, Model A. Good cars? Oh, well, that was a good car. Very good. Yep. After you were done working as a hired man, then was silo construction the next job you went to? Oh, yeah. We built, built a lot of silos. And then after that, where? Malt house. Huh? Malt. At the malt house. Oh, that must be. Yeah, that's when I went to the malt house. Yeah. Quite a few years there. I got retired there when Dick got tired of me. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had uh, the longest job you ever had after you retired, right? At the Beacon? Uh, yeah, I guess it probably was. I was there a long time. Yeah, I think you said it was 32 years you're working for the Beacon. So really? Yeah, it was 30 years after he retired from the malt house. Yeah. After 28 years at the malt house? Oh, wow. So what did you do at the Beacon office? I worked on the shopper. You had a bunch of guys you worked with for a long time there. Who, who was yeah. that? I worked with uh, Jim Magnuson, Melvin Lundell, mm -hmm. Jerry Erickson. Mm -hmm. I um, also heard you work uh, for the fair, the oh, fairgrounds. Right? Yeah, I worked at the fairgrounds four or five years, I think. Four or five. You've been around Cannon Falls a long time. What? How's the town changed 
since you first remember it? <laughs> well, it's changed a lot. It's, it's a much deader town now than it was years ago. What were some of the things that made it lively? Uh, overall party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And the little towns there had a lot of uh, entertainment in those days, you know. So did your folks do all their shopping in Cannon Falls for what they needed? Well, uh, we did most of our shopping in Bell Creek. Oh. That was a big uh, store there, the grocery shopping mm -hmm. and stuff. And back, uh, back in those days in Cannon Falls, I understand you had one, one police officer for the town? Yeah. And uh, uh, how would you rate the crime rate back then versus now? Well, there was no crime that I can think of back then. Uh -huh. Well, things have changed. How about how about in the United States as a whole? Do you, do you think of anything big difference? Do you see a lot of differences in the last 80, 90, 100 years? Uh, Everything changes, you know. Uh, I think it didn't change for the better. It the did. old days were the best. Are they? You prefer to go back in those old days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How's your health these days? Oh, I don't think there's anything wrong with me. All right. You got another hundred in you? Uh, another hundred? Yeah? Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, you had some knee replacement or hip replacement? Oh, I had both my knees replaced, right. yeah. How long ago was that? Well, how long ago, Mama? About in the 90s. Ah. I don't remember. Got along pretty well without it. Yeah. With new, new replacements. Yep. Yeah. I understand you don't take many medications either. No. no. So what? Uh, a little drink of whiskey a day. Oh, well, that ought to do it. That's medication. <laughs> That's so is that prescribed or is that a home remedy, would you say? The doctor didn't prescribe that for no, you. No. <laughs> but as long as it works, uh, <laughs> sounds good to me. How about you, you, your own family now? You've got uh, six kids. Mm -hmm. Maybe Clara's going to help here. No? You, you've got uh, how many grandkids? And Fifteen grandkids and... 20, about 25 great-grandkids now, and three great-great-grandchildren. Oh, gosh. So. Could you name them, George, or not? <laughs> 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 Is there anything left on your, what they call your bucket list? Are there any things that you still want to do? Any big <laughs> trips or? Oh, no. <laughs> pretty contented right where you are? Pretty much so, yeah. Good, good. I hope, yeah. Do you keep up on politics? Yeah. Are you pretty open-minded, you would say, or? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe that. Don't ask me if I like Trump. No, I won't. I won't. <laughs> I know better. You, how about, uh, are you a sports fan? Yeah, I like baseball and watch football. Mm -hmm. What do you got planned for the next hundred years? Well, it takes a little planning, but I'm uh, working at it. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to be remembered by your family and friends? I'd like to be remembered as a, not an easy going guy. Hard nosed guy. Oh. Hard nosed guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen that part of you too much. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a great uncle for, for all of us for a long time. Any favorite kids? <laughs> no. No. You want to go there? Huh? I won't go there. <laughs> I, want, I want to go back to that 
you mentioned about trapping skunk. I, and, I can smell them now. Yeah, but didn't you uh, and one of your buddies, didn't you save some of the scent one time? Ooh. What happened with that then? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you bottled it, see, and went up and down the street, kind of fall, put a little on the doorknobs. <laughs> So then, and then when the people went in there, they turned. Around. <laughs> Whoa, that's that terrible smell! <laughs> and we sat and watched them, you know. Who was in on that besides you? Oh, well, was Marvin Berg's idea. Wow. <laughs> I blame it on Marvin. Oh. <laughs> you and Marvin were both in service, but he got he went overseas. Yeah. And then things didn't go so well. No, no, we. We wrote letters to each other, and when I wrote him a letter, I got it back, and it said, deceased. So he got killed over in Belgium. Okay. Two of your brothers, most of us, uh, nephews, nieces, uh, and grandchildren, didn't know either Henry or Raymond. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, about those two guys? Was Henry in the service? Henry? Yeah? No. No? No, he died before. Well. Like, uh, according to the He records. died before World War II. Okay. Yeah. What did he die of? Blood clot. Okay. Now that was, uh, the blood clotting factor has been a, uh, a big deal in the rap family. Yeah, it was, yeah. Do, yeah. do you have that clotting factor? Oh, no, no cause. Um, I know at least half of the your brothers and sisters have had yeah. problems with, yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. but is that what happened to Raymond also? Your, yeah. your brother, Ray? Yeah, he had a blood clot. Blood clot, huh? Yeah. So. <clears throat> Was he the closest in age to you? The... Mm, let's see. He was... Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, I think he was four years older. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Ray, uh, Henry, it's, uh, he uh, had a restaurant, I understand. In, yeah, he did. In for a while. And R Raymond, did, did he go to the service? He was in the Navy for. Oh, one hit, four years, of course. Four years? Yeah. Well, you're the last, uh, th the last of the clan. And uh, we, yeah. we sure hope we can keep you around another hundred years or so. <laughs> yeah. What did you do to Grandpa's tractor? Yeah, I, I heard you got in a little trouble when you were a child with the tractor. Wasn't there a pitchfork involved? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I had a pitchfork and I rammed it into the radiator. Well, were you mad about something? Or? No, I just thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa didn't think it was fun at that. No, no. no. <laughs> when they put water in it, it shot out. <laughs> so, yeah. she wanted to know about Hiram Ellis. That's Chasing our police, you. Police guy. Chasing you. And he went into a garage to hide. Yeah. Remember? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he was chasing me, and I turned right up here someplace, and I saw a garage door open. I drove in there, and he drove by. That was the end of that. That was the end of that. <laughs> I outwitted him. <laughs> I just want to say that this is a, a great day to be interview my 100-year-old uncle. And uh, he's been a great uncle, I mean a good uncle, and a great uncle. I've uh, enjoyed every day that I've known George. And uh, got a lot, of, a lot of good stories about George. Uh, first I'll start with the story that <coughs> Grandma Rap Boys told about him. And it's pretty cute. It's not, Grandma was a great person and she, Handle her kids with love and, but once in a while, those days, they got a spanking if they did something really bad. So the story goes that 
was, <coughs> Grandma was uh, cooking, and uh, her and Mamie Benson, was it? Do you remember Mamie Benson? And George did something naughty. And I don't know what it was, but it was pretty bad. So uh, he took off. I'll, I'll stop and say, he was about four years old now when this happened. So he, t he, t he took off and took off down to the barn and they went after him. And they got him in this corner and then he, he bargained with him. Uh, George is a great bargain person. He said, okay, if you're gonna spank me and take my pants down, it's gonna be a spanking, you gotta promise to put my spenders back up again. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the kind of negotiator George is. But, but anyway, uh, I've known George. Uh, you know, he, like he said before, he uh, like most men before the war, World War II, they uh, stayed born around the rural area. They were helped on the farms and hired hands. And uh, he uh, worked for my dad, and uh, he was a heck of a he was a heck of a good hired man, and he was. Like my dad always said that George could have been a good farmer if he wanted to be. And uh, I agree with that totally. And I uh, saw George go off to the war and, you know, and uh, in fact, I had five uncles that were in the service. But uh, came back and, you know, he uh, fitted in perfect in the society. And he's, uh, he's done everything that, uh, well, he's had different. He's lived in the same town, but he's had different occupations. And, and I don't know. There's a lot of people know George, and uh, that's a good thing. So I believe that he could be a have a TV station, right? He could be, be a TV celebrity after this interview. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, happy birthday! Oh, thank you. Oh, people ask me about the boys that I play cards with, Virgil and um, Melvin and George. And uh, I, I always say George is, he's 99, but he's going on 21. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I sincerely mean it. Yeah. Well, I tell you, um, I feel so blessed to have been raised in the Rapp family. And I was third oldest of the grandkids and we were the only ones that lived in town. And I tell you, it was a circus every day. And <laughs> my mother had to have loved her brothers dearly because um, they pulled a lot of pranks on mom and dad. And uh, my mother's brothers were the brothers my dad didn't have and he fit right in with them. And um, it happened that they were all home not all. It was Leroy and um, George were in the military <clears throat> and they came home on leave. And Virgil was staying with us that time. Different, uh, at that time, different ones of the boys would come and live with mom and dad and pay room and board because we were the only ones that lived in town. Well, it happened that the three of them, uh, two were home on military leave and of course, they'd go downtown at night and come home <laughs> and um, we're pretty jolly and uh, the, there was three of, them, three of them to one bed and none of them wanted to sleep in the middle. Well, they got mom and dad's bedroom was down below uh, their bedroom where they were sleeping and there was a crash upstairs. And then he heard, we're not satisfied with our sleeping quarters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, dad just figured, well, you know, they were complaining. And about the third time they said that, he went upstairs. And what had happened was none of the three wanted to sleep in the middle, so they lined up into one end of the room and ran into the, and jumped in the bed, and the slats moved, and the mattress and everything went down on the floor. Remember this? Yes. Well, Dad fixed it, and he just got back into bed downstairs, and there was even a bigger crash. And then it was, we're not satisfied with our sleeping quarters. 
after about three times of that, Dad went up there and he took one look into the bedroom and the board that connects the headboard and the footboard was split right down the middle, the whole length of the bed. <laughs> and my dad just turned around, went downstairs and went back to bed. <laughs> but like I said, um, it was just a blast all the time at our house. And uh, that was one, and then sometimes he wasn't in the military yet. Well, it must've been after he was in the military, he'd stayed with us. And of course, we three girls were in school by that time. And um, we'd go to a ball game and he'd come and say, um, when we got home, he'd say, well, who won? And we'd say, who won? And he's, well, what position did you play? He'd say. <laughs> or we'd ask him a question about something he had done or where he had been. And then he'd say, are you writing a book? We'll leave that chapter out, he'd say. <laughs> so I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it, I could go on and on, but it was, um, it was really a lot of fun, and I think my mother would have done anything for her brothers, and did, and I could tell a lot more stories with the, uh, growing up with the other siblings of my mother. My father is Conrad, George's brother. And my sisters and I used to go down on Saturdays to help Dad clean his house after Mother had passed away. And we finally convinced him to hire someone to do it so we could go down there and just spend the day visiting. And we'd usually get there about 9 o'clock on the Saturday morning. And uh, Dad had the coffee going and maybe cookies or rolls he had bought for us. And we came down there that one Saturday and it was uh, about 9 o'clock. Dad wasn't anywhere in sight. We started looking around and pretty quick he comes walking out of the bedroom. His bare feet pulling up his suspenders on his bibbed overalls, no shirt on. He was just getting out of bed. And we were a little concerned. We said, oh, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, he was just fine. He hadn't gotten home from playing poker with the boys until seven o'clock that morning. <laughs> And uh, they really did enjoy their poker games. He enjoyed them. Uh -huh. And I know not too long ago I mentioned to George and Clarice that the boys must be up there having a nice cribbage game. And uh, George said, oh, no, that would be poker. <laughs> and Clarice said, oh, yes, with a shot of whiskey on the side. <laughs> That's my story. Never drank whiskey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, those sort of good old days. Those were. No. Those were. But I will say that every time I see, have seen one of the brothers, they all look alike. Really? They're all, you're all Conrad all over again. Every oh. one of them. Oh, well, every well, one of them is Conrad well, all over again. Well, not all bad. Not all bad. <laughs> good looking young men. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> those of you who know George, he's, He's always put together very well and neat. And I had the privilege of working with him for three summers at Minnesota Malting when I was in college. And one of our jobs was to tar some of the highest roofs on the plant. And I'd come home head to foot covered with tar and George looked like he walked out of church. I can still see him with the little squeegee going back and forth and he managed to stay neat as a pin all day. I wasn't quite so lucky. <laughs> yeah, a lot of good memories. Back to the military, you were an MP for a while. Yeah. Guarding ships or little of everything? Or? Or everything. Did you ever have any run-ins with any Russians up there? Or? I had one with one big Russian there once. Was there a difference of opinion or what? Well, we weren't supposed to let them on the on the pier, they were drunk, see. So this big galoot, he came staggering, and I tried to stop him. And I had to pull my pistol out, but then he stopped. <laughs> but uh, then there was a guardhouse right there, so we went and got the guards, and they took care of him. That was part of it. We just wanted to 
thank uh, Steve Dablo and uh, uh, Mike Gesme for putting together this this production for us. And um, I want to thank Brian for agreeing to come and help. He's known George for quite a few years here, and uh, I understand he, you guys have been card players, card partners for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. he's, <laughs> yeah. He should be remembered as the best cribbage player I've ever played with. Oh, before. wow. <laughs> yeah. And also I want to thank uh, people uh, from my family for providing pictures. Or, uh, I understand there's going to be a book put together with uh, pictures of each of our families that we can all have a copy of. And, mm -hmm. and um, especially want to thank you and Clarice for for sharing some of your thoughts with us. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. How did I do, Ma? Okay. Okay. How oh, they drag you into it? <laughs> well, this is fun.